Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today I'm going to show you how to build a fruit fly trap that is cheap, easy, and effective, and then I'll give you some tips for dealing with fruit fly impersonators that may look a lot like fruit flies, but they need very different treatment to control them. The materials you will need to construct this fly trap are a jam jar with a tight fitting lid, some apple cider vinegar, make sure to get real apple cider vinegar and not distilled vinegar that has colorants added to it to make it look like apple cider vinegar. A little bit of water. This is water from my refrigerator filter, but tap water would probably work fine as well. I need some dish detergent. I like to use a toothpick in conjunction with the dish detergent. I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Then you'll need a hammer and I use a screw or a nail to drive the holes with the hammer into the lid and then, because I'm using a hammer, safety goggles. So let's get started. So I'll put the safety goggles on. And now I knock about half a dozen small holes in the lid here of the container. I've experimented a bit with number of holes, size of holes, and so on. It doesn't seem too critical. I've gone anywhere from two holes to eight holes. It doesn't seem to matter a lot. You don't want a huge gaping hole in the lid because otherwise it will be too easy for the fruit flies to escape. All right. The next step is to add the water. Just about an inch or so in the bottom is fine. And then here, you don't want to use a lot of of the dish detergent. So I just use a toothpick to get just a really small amount on the tip of the toothpick and then sort of swish it around in that water. And you can see there's some suds forming. That is plenty. The idea here is that the detergent, which is a surfactant, reduces the surface tension of the water. So when the fruit flies land on the liquid, instead of being able to stand on it, they sink down into it and drown. The next step is to add some of the apple cider vinegar. I do about equal parts apple cider vinegar to the water, something like that. Again, the exact proportions are not terribly critical. Now you simply screw on the lid and put this in a place where you're having issues with fruit flies. As you can see here, the traps are very effective. Usually within a day or so, I find that there are lots and lots of fruit flies that have entered the trap and gotten caught in this liquid that has lower surface tension than normal water and they drown. You can experiment a lot with different recipes with different sizes of jars, depths of the uh, solution and, and so on. Recently I've started to add some granulated white sugar to the solution and that seems to work really well, maybe even better than the original recipe. And uh, you know, you can play around with plastic containers versus glass containers, which I've started to do. So far I found out that glass containers for me at least have worked better in general. There are also commercially available fly traps based on this method. I'll put a link in the description to some of those, but I would just say that testing them out, uh, I think that the homemade version works better. They have a higher volume of the solution in there and they tend to just catch more flies and they take longer to evaporate. So basically they last longer, but mileage may vary. And if you like the more aesthetically pleasing commercially available traps, then that may be something you want to consider as well. So now, whether you have fruit flies in the house because it's summer or late fall and the fruit flies come in because they're attracted to fruit and they can go through window screen like it's not even there, let's face it, or maybe you keep dart frogs or small geckos or predatory insects like I do and you breed fruit flies to feed to them and they sometimes get out, you have some tools to be able to take care of them. Now, before I move on to the fruit fly impersonators, I'd like to thank our supporters at Patreon. There's really a lot that you do for this channel and I can't thank you enough for that. And to the rest of you who are watching the channel and support the channel in any way at all, I appreciate what you do as well. So now let's talk about those fruit fly impersonators. The first one is the fungus gnat. Now the fungus gnat is often mistaken for a fruit fly by an untrained eye, but they tend to be thinner, have a pointier body, kind of a darker coloration to them. And they're attracted to things like 
moist soil in a houseplant pot or moist soil in a vivarium, like an isopod enclosure or a millipede enclosure, something like that. Now, those tend to be fungus gnats rather than fruit flies, and treating them is quite different. And I, in fact, have an entire video on that topic. So if you want to check that out, that can help you if you're dealing with a fungus gnat problem. I have quite a few tips and suggestions for you. I also have some products down in the description that you can check out that can help you deal with fungus gnats. Now, another fruit fly impersonator I'd like to talk about is the forid fly. A forid fly looks like kind of a large fruit fly. When you disturb it, it tends to run in bursts rather than actually fly off like a fruit fly is more likely to do. And forid flies are attracted to dead things. So if you have, say, a tarantula that leaves a bolus of um, you know, undigested insect parts or a reptile that does something similar, it's uh, kind of a messy eater and leaves bits behind, you might be dealing with forid flies. Now, the first thing you should check on if you have forid flies is what kind of a cleanup crew you have in your enclosure. You may need to change your cleanup crew, or if you don't have one at all, you might really want to consider adding some suitable isopods and springtails. And I have other videos about isopods and springtails and their use in bioactive enclosures, so I encourage you to check those out as well. I hope these tips for dealing with fruit flies, fungus gnats, and forward flies were helpful. If you have any other suggestions or ideas, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.